This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters today, uh, here on a given Thursday. And we're going to report on two things today. One is, uh, you know, how Harvey looks from the vantage uh, of Bob Brown in San Antonio. And the second part of the show, we're going to talk uh, with Ethan Allen, our, our science host, about uh, a new breakthrough in uh, cancer therapy that just was reported by the newspapers and especially the MIT uh, newsletter this morning. Uh, very important. Anyway, so let's talk about... Uh, Let's talk about uh, Harvey first. Bob Brown, welcome to the show. Welcome to Think Tech. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we, so you live in San Antonio, and uh, my, my understanding is the storm did not directly hit San Antonio, but you've had significant effects there. Can you describe how Harvey looks from the vantage of San Antonio? Well, you have to know what kind of uh, uh, viewpoint we have here. San Antonio is at the base of the hill country. Uh, we, uh, myself, uh, are located about 840 feet above sea level. Corpus Christi is about 230 miles from us, and uh, Houston downtown is approximately uh, 250 miles from where we uh, sit for an advantage. When the Harvey came in, uh, it was threatening to come up as uh, halfway between Corpus Christi and uh, San Antonio. Uh, consequently, it did drift a little bit to the north and we were in the southwest quadrant uh, as the uh, storm itself is uh, counterclockwise all that water was being uh, uplifted and brought in north of corpus christi and uh, corpus christi got hit with uh, winds uh, as a category three just uh, up above it and we saw winds on the second day i guess after it hit about 40, 45 knots. Ooh. We uh, uh, can get straight winds here in uh, San Antonio uh, up, upwards of 70 miles an hour. So 40 knot in winds are, are nothing really big, mm -hmm. although it will start uh, clipping uh, uh, limbs and what have you. We had some squall lines come through, but even in the quadrant we are at, you don't get the tornado uh, tornadic activity mm -hmm. that you uh, uh, was reported and touched down uh, in the first uh, couple of hours mm -hmm. of uh, Harvey coming ashore. So how, how you so, know, so uh, we you, you only lucked out in a way. You you lucked out. We, we certainly lucked. did. We certainly did. Uh, when we first moved to San Antonio in 1988, we did have Gilbert come through, and it came right up to San Antonio. But again, it was not much rain, but. Uh, what we uh, got was uh, we were at that time in the uh, correct quadrant, uh, the uh, uh, northeast quadrant, and a couple of tornadoes hit mm -hmm. and uh, tore things up mm -hmm. around here. So for you, but, this, uh, for you, Harvey wasn't as bad as Gilbert. Exactly, exactly. Plus, we we haven't had uh, rain for about a month. We were already in uh, restricted uh, water usage of once a week mm -hmm. uh, for a certain power, part of the day, uh, depending on what uh, number you have on your house. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, we were looking forward to the rain to, to fill, help fill our aquifer, and it <laughs> is going to be filled. Uh, uh, we sit over an aquifer that uh, needs about 640 uh, feet uh, of water before uh, 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 before the restrictions can be lifted. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's gone up to as, as much as 710, but when that happens, springs come up out all, everywhere. Mm -hmm. But like I say, uh, uh, it did disrupt uh, our estate sale uh, treasure hunting, and uh, oh. we cut it short uh, at about 5 on Friday when the wind started to pick up a bit. <laughs> So, so you know, how, how have you been disrupted? I mean, you must have some disruption, uh, either well, supply disruptions or something. Well, we had a lot of phone calls from my else. family in Florida giving us advice on how to survive a uh, hurricane. Uh, they know. Uh, we had advice coming in from Maui uh, <laughs> on how to survive a hurricane. <laughs> They're all concerned and, about uh, you, did, Bob. <laughs> yes, we had heard from relatives we haven't even talked to in, in a couple of years. <laughs> but they all had advice for us, and we pointed out that we have enough uh, bottled water and Dr. Pepper. We had 
rice. You had rice. Trader Joe, jelly beans. <laughs> yeah, and we had rice. Yes, that, that was the question from Hawaii. Do you have rice? <laughs> yeah. If I didn't mention it, uh, Bob is from Hawaii. He spent a whole career here, <laughs> and, and uh, moved uh, moved to Texas a few years earlier. But anyway, uh, yeah. so uh, yeah, what are the disruptions? I mean, have you have you had trouble getting food? Uh, and how about supplies like gasoline? Uh, we have not personally had that problem. Uh, like I say, uh, had told you a little earlier that uh, we did have people come out from Corpus and some people from Rockport to come in, but we have all already taken people in from Katrina and from uh, Ike when it came through and Rita. So we are not ill prepared for uh, uh, evacuees to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we are housing about 30,000 of them in San Antonio. Uh, as we speak, they may be going back. The, the waters are receding quickly down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We've had no problems with food. We had we, uh, we kind of were under house arrest while we had a 40-knot winds blowing. There was no reason to be out on the roads with yeah. things uh, being tossed about, so we just ate leftovers. <laughs> uh, At least it was a short However, we had reports from, from people that they were lined up in the uh, and getting water and... and uh, and for, uh, perishables uh, in at the local uh, HEBs. That's how it stands for Howard E. Butts. Uh -huh. uh, it's a big, uh, it's it's a fairly large, it's like Albertsons or Kroger. Mm -hmm, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a regional uh, 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 grocery chain. Yeah. So where are the, uh, where are the uh, evacuees being housed? Uh, the AT&T Center where the Spurs play. And uh, that photograph is where I was on Christmas Day this uh, past uh, Christmas mm -hmm. uh, with my son there in the uh, background. Uh, this afternoon, we just came in from uh, going shopping, not for uh, perishables, but for, uh, for uh, things that were on sale that we could send to our uh, son and daughter mm -hmm. in Alaska and uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Seattle. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a hard time coming down the road because uh, prices uh, and the gasoline have jumped 30 cents from this morning. Why? So people were, I guess there's a Labor Day kickoff, so everybody was, I've never seen, I, I was in Hawaii in 70, uh, in the 70s, uh, 75 and 72, and saw um, the, uh, the increase in fuel there in Hawaii not having the um, gas. Yeah. And it, I can't remember if it was being rationed or not because I did have a Porsche, but it didn't take much gas, but I, I pushed it more often than it, <laughs> than it ran. So, so are there lines yeah. Are there lines for the gas? In there are lines time? out into the road. Uh, at uh, We saw, I guess the worst one was at Walmart. Uh, it just backed up, people uh, trying to get in. And, and Walmart has 16 pumps. Uh, and... Wow. Um, and they have another Walmart about two blocks away that was uh, probably the same way. Yeah. But just uh, the drag from uh, Randolph Air Force Base up yeah. about a mile and a half, I think people were spilling into there. But we had filled up when it was uh, less expensive. So How about the news? You, you live in Texas. Day. Everybody in Texas is interested in, in fact, everybody in the country is interested in what's happening with Harvey. But um, how about in San Antonio? What kind of news are you getting? Uh, constant. Say? Uh, we have the people in New York telling us how things are here, and we have people in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. telling us how things are here, and uh, it's uh, the regular news is not is being interrupted all the time, so we, we get nothing local. Yeah. And some of it's correct. Uh, uh, the, uh, the flooding in Houston is a uh, perennial thing. Uh, they probably got more water than they have ever uh, thought they could ever take, but uh, Houston is uh, what a foot and a half above the sea level. Mm -hmm. It's not New Orleans. They mm -hmm. don't have pumps, except for some of the places where the uh, interstate goes down. Yeah. Uh, but it uh, those were all surrounded. Houston was was uh, uh, and still is uh, a rice growing area, so it, 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 the rice won't be affected that much. Yeah. You have to remember, too, that Galveston was uh, devastated at the turn of the century, not this last one, but the turn of the century passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the main port for Texas. Yeah. And it was wiped out with a great loss of life. And that's what actually established Houston as a port. They, got, they uh, just 
they stopped using Galveston altogether. Yeah. It was just blown off the map. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, Houston built itself. It has no zoning. Uh, it's probably one of the... Uh, it's the fifth, it's the fifth the largest world, city in the country. Uh, Houston's fourth the fifth largest, largest city in the country, no zoning. No zoning. Uh, Amazing. You, no. No. Yeah. The, uh, the refineries between uh, downtown Houston, uh, which has got a big uh, BP presence there, just on the outskirts uh, is uh, Baytown, which has a big refinery. And then from Baytown through Beaumont, through Port Arthur, through Lake Charles areas, just nothing but refineries. Interesting. Uh, and uh, that's where all those pipelines that coming from the north and, and from the west going out to the east coast mm -hmm. uh, all originate in that one area. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I understand they're closed down. Well, that's... Well, that's got to be a we, reason for we, the increase in the gas price. Well, I think it's more of a panic for the people around here because if they think about it, Three Rivers is where we get our... Valero has uh, their refinery down at Three Rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's where we get our gas, mm -hmm. gasoline. It doesn't come in from Houston. So, Bob, we uh, only have a minute more before we're going to go off to the next segment here. And I... I just uh, wanted to ask you for your impressions in general and the lessons you learned or you believe should be learned um, by this whole event and the way it's been handled. Um, my wife and I have great pride in uh, being from Hawaii. However, being in Texas is just uh, is another world. It's a, it's a uh, state unto itself, and we'll do just right. Uh, the people uh, come together, and they uh, have seen themselves get through Katrina and Rita and Ike, and uh, uh, this was not going to be something that uh, will uh, bring us down. Great. It shows you the sustainability, the resilience of not only the, the infrastructure, such as it is, but also the people, because they make the community. Well, thank you so much. Exactly. Bob Brown from San Antonio reporting on how, uh, how Harvey looks from the vantage of San Antonio. We're going to take a short break, come back with our next segment. Thank you again, Bob. And as they say, aloha. Howdy. <laughs> Welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our everyday. Some are good, 
others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live into our second segment here on Report from the Front. Actually, Reports from the Front uh, under the banner of Community Matters. In this case, we have a community in San Antonio, Texas, looking at Harvey. And we have Ethan Allen from Likeable Science, <laughs> the host, talking about a remarkable uh, development, the approval of a remarkable development by the FDA on groundbreaking gene therapy for cancer that is actually being used now, right. uh, and that is fabulous. So tell us about this. This could change our world, Ethan, don't you think? Yeah, this, this is really a striking advance. This is the first time the FDA has actually approved a therapy where they literally pull cells out of your body, separate out one type of your immune cells, insert a particular gene into a particular place in those cells, stick them back into you, and now those cells are essentially assassins for a particular disease cell, in this case, acute lymph lymphoplastic leukemia. And they go specifically after acute lymphoblastic leukemia cells and kill them off. Right, and that kind of uh, leukemia is, is bad. It's, it affects young people, typically adults below the age of 20, either kids and or adults up to age 20, about 3,000 a year, about 600 of them each year relapse from it and don't have a very good prognosis. I can tell you that it affects elderly people too. My mother died from that. Really? Really? Yeah, huh. yeah. Wow. At, at the age of 53. Wow. So, um, yeah, it is a serious disease, uh, but it's only one kind of cancer. Oh, yes. But let's talk about the, the solution as it is presented for this one kind of cancer. Right. Who invented this? Do you know what, what school it came out of, what hospital? Uh, no, it's, it's apparently, I mean, the government had, has been funding a lot of different fundamental science, helping scientists understand these mechanisms. I mean, we'd say you insert a gene, and that sounds like a fairly simple kind of thing. Oh. But you know, every cell in your body has about six feet long of DNA in it, which has about 25,000 genes in it, and then probably 100,000 uh, other things, not genes. But we have mapped this. We've mapped All within the last 10 years or so, right. we have mapped yeah. every one right. of those genes. But you've got to take that gene that you want and put it in just the right place, because where a gene lives turns out to be very, very important ah, in how it functions. So relative to position and yeah. on, on so the you, chain. Yes, yeah, so you have to somehow, in each cell you're doing this, you've got to be sure it plugs in just in the right place and doesn't screw up anything else when, you, when it happens. Well, let's talk about that. So when you say plug in, what are you plugging exactly? You're plugging it, it's essentially, it's, it's a, a, a gene, so it's a, it's a string, a se segment of DNA that basically gets translated into a protein. Okay, so uh, it's a certain kind of it's a, DNA, it's which sequence, is a protein. It's a translated sequence, into a protein. yeah, a sequence of DNA that gets read into, turned into a protein. Okay, so now here I am, and I have this person's blood, right. and I find, uh, say, one cell. So start with right, one cell. Right. And I get into the, uh, the chromosomes, DNA, right? the genes on one cell. <laughs> right. As I recall, well, the chromosomes are inside the genes, or the genes are inside genes the chromosomes? Genes are parts of the chromosome. Genes are part of the chromosome. Right. The chrom chromosome is a six foot long gene? Yes, right. Okay, and, and so I got to find the gene mm -hmm. in this one little tiny chromosome, mm -hmm. in this one little tiny, tiny cell. I got to find it. Right. And then I got to modify it by putting a special protein in that gene well, so as to modify you're, the gene. You're either, you're either pulling out the, the defective gene and sticking in a Replacing good copy it. of it, or, yeah, uh, or sticking in pieces that fix it, in essence, that make it produce the proper protein. So now instead. this gene is going to operate differently, it's going to yes. cause the body to operate differently, the right. blood so, in this so, case is going to operate right. differently. Right, so these T cells now, these T immune cells now are programmed to produce a protein on their surface that specifically looks for a protein that only occurs on lymphoblastic leukemia cells, 
and basically latches onto that and then destroys those cells, marks them basically for destruction. Now the T cell, I mean, not to put it in too general a term, but the T cell is the cell you're looking for in the blood. Yes. That's the one you want. That's the one that Novartis pulls you out. Separate at, that out from the blood. And genetically modifies. Yeah. Modify it. And, and then, then st stick it back into you, basically. Okay, that okay. takes 20 days to do that. So they pull these cells out, spend 20 days messing with them, as it were, and then stick, them, stick them back into you. Okay, and, and, that's, and that's just an infusion, a, right. a, a, an but, injection, so to speak. Right. Of, blood into blood. Right. And that's, of course, the one drawback is that 20-day lag if you are very, very sick with this I cancer. Uh, yeah. But I, I would predict it's going to get faster. Yes, there are other groups working on very similar kinds of things that are applying to the FDA for approval for similar types of therapy. It's called CAR-T therapy for uh, uh, chimeric antigen receptor uh, T cell therapy. So a couple of things come to mind. I mean, number one is uh, we, we described how you could fix one gene with this protein and either replace it or modify it. So now that it's got a stronger immu immune system and can go kill the cancer cells, that's mm -hmm. really wonderful. Um, but that's one cell. Mm -hmm. And you got 20 days to do a lot of cells. Mm -hmm. How many cells can you do in 20 days? I'm sure I, it's not I, I, that many. I, I suspect actually they, they probably do a, some sort of a batch processing where they're dealing with oh, probably, lots of them. probably hundreds of thousands of cells at a time. Even and, that and, is and, small and, compared to the number right. of millions of cells well, in the human um, body. Right, right. Yeah. I, I don't really know what the, what the actual numbers they, they actually tweak are, but uh, so you take a little. It's a little bit of blood, though, even with all of that, right? And you inject it back in, right? And now, how does this little bit of blood, you know, kill leukemia all around? It's systemic all around your body. How does that happen? Uh, well, so the T cells are part of your immune system, and they're always circulating through your blood, circulating widely, and they're they're looking basically for the bad guys, for foreign anyway. in, invaders, right? So now you have you have ordinary T cells that were not modified right. by the process, right? You also have these special high octane T cells right, that, that are now are sort of unleashed. They, they have, as it were, they're, they're carrying around the picture of the leukemia cell and saying, "These are the bad guys. I'm, I'm after these specific bad guys." And your other cells are sort of a little bit blind to them. To the Why bad does it guys. sound like a computer program? <coughs> well, it sounds like that. I mean, a lot of it, it. It is a matter of coding. It's coding in this case DNA to RNA, RNA to protein, and. Yeah, so it, it is not dissimilar in that sense to, to computer work. Now, you were, you were touching on this idea that uh, we'd be able to do this in other kinds of cancers, right. uh, finding other kinds of uh, parallels to T cells. Right. That deal, what, what's the story on that? Well, so again, you, you have a number of different types of cells within your immune system that have different jobs. And, and again, if you can get those cells to recognize their particular enemies better, or if you have somebody who has a, his or her own cells are defective and you, you make them effective again so they can recognize the, the bad guys they should, uh, you know, you, you fixed, in a sense you fixed the real problem. You haven't, you're not sticking in a bunch of drugs that are going to mess with all kinds of other things right, and have bad, effects, bad side effects. Yeah. It's a very neat, very specific yeah. therapy. You're only using your own cells. Yeah, that is not to say it is without risk. They, they have had an early uh, trials of this CAR T therapy, they've had people die from it. They've had people get very, very sick from it because sometimes these chimeric antigenic receptors interact oddly. Uh, and whether they are not targeting just the right thing or whether something else in your body now looks at them and says, these guys are weird. And, and so it's, a, it's a different kind of side effect that right. could be profound because we, we're not really. We don't understand all the side right, effects. Right, exactly. The, the, immune the biochemical system, side effects. Yeah, the immune system is tremendously complex. Yeah, yeah. and on that very note, it sounds like uh, you have to find, first you have to target the single kind of cancer you want. In mm -hmm. this case, it's this blastic leukemia mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then work on that with the T cell for that, right, that well, kind of cancer. Now, if you want to solve something else, no. You have to look at that kind of cancer well, and find the parallel and, there. And, it, and it's intriguing because just a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, they came out with a, a type, a new approach to cancer therapy that is not cancer type specific. So it, it hits a mechanism that underlies many types of cancer. It, uh, same kinds of mechanisms apparently underlie, at least on some level, underlie prostate cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer. Or even no, leukemia. Uh, uh, yeah. and pro perhaps even leukemia. I don't remember the so exact So that, that underlying the if, common if, denominator yeah, if, is if you a can, huge thing. Yeah, if you could combine these two things now, yeah. then you'd begin to have yeah. a tool that, that becomes very, very powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. Because so we really have broken through on yeah, something yeah. here. Because it, A, 
this this sounds like if the FDA approved it, this sounds like it, it, it was likely to work on yeah. people. They, they just they, everybody in the country is going to be interested in this, you know, for any leukemia case. Sure. sure. Um, B is that uh, you know if we find the common denominator or we use the same technique in other kinds of cancers, this could be a cure to multiple kinds of cancers right. in the same way that it, it works on leukemia. Right. This is fabulous. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very exciting stuff. I mean, again, it's great, and it suggests that we need to be supporting our scientists, supporting the work they do, the work. When it seems often obscure or unconnected, it's payoffs come in things. Payoffs think, like this. Yeah. Who knows? It probably came from a bunch of ideas that just yep. sort of came together for somebody, and somebody realized right. that this thing works with that thing, and now right. you got a result. I mean, it was 70 plus years ago that Watson and Crick sort of figured out this business about what right. DNA really was, right. and, and that's turned out to be a critical basis right. for understanding a whole and bunch. now the research money we spent mapping the human genome mm -hmm. right. is paying off right. big time. Yeah, and well, it'll be more payoff along the same lines, I'm sure. Exactly. I mean, the whole country is going to want this. The whole world is going to want this. Right. This is big. So you, you found it in the MIT download, yes. is it? Yes, yes. And you can sign up for that. You can look up this yep. article and read more about it. It was also in the Times a day mm -hmm. or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, so this is out there. It's happening. Not only did the FDA approve it, but it is being done in various right. hospitals. Yeah, yeah, it's about the 20 country. centers around the country that are using yeah. it now. They hope to increase that to maybe 30 plus centers. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. And I think what's interesting from political side, I don't they didn't mention it in these articles, I don't think, but political side, this all happened before the Trump administration took office. Mm -hmm. And query whether the Trump administration would fund the kind of research like the mapping of the genome. Um, you know, that somebody else funded before, whether they would fund anything like that now. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of in a hiatus of sorts going forward with new revelations this way. Yes. But happy, happy news is that we yes. had this revelation Absolutely. and it will incur encourage further research and maybe further administrations. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Jay. Very exciting. Very, very, very exciting. Always exciting. a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Take <you>. care. <laughs>